So the next talk uh, is provided by uh, Patrick uh, from Avast, uh, and he's going to tell us something about uh, <laughs> Exactly, so I'm passing my work Right, I'll start with... <laughs> I'll start by lowering my expectations. Uh, I will not show you any line of code as they did. Uh, maybe I should because you're most, uh, mostly developers, so my bad. I, I didn't know exactly what to expect from this. I just learned two days ago that I was going to make a presentation. This is what I think what it was about. So it's going to be more interesting maybe for people who are still thinking if it's a good thing, if it's a good uh, thing to do, but uh, well, we will see. That was problematic for me, so when I was going to see the list of the students from the class and to see where I belong to, it was quite common to see things like my, my name written in this way. <laughs> Patrish, Patricio, which is the Portuguese version of Patrick. Patricia, which is the worst, it's a feminine name, a feminine version of Patrick in Portuguese. <laughs> Well, well I moved to, after moving to the Czech Republic, I got quite happy you know, because <laughs> although it's awkward for them to see long names and it's a problem to fill forms, uh, my name never fits in any form. They expect me to have two, three names at, at uh, Mexico, but I have five. And Patrick is a common name in the Czech Republic, so they write it with K, which is quite okay, it's just missing one letter. So, uh, and before going forward, I want you to ask, uh, I want to ask you to do uh, an exercise. So, imagine you guys are flying to a very exotic country. Uh, in this case, uh, Guinea-Bissau. Most of you haven't heard about it. It's a tiny country in Western Africa. It has a beautiful nature, amazing. Um, but it's not very... Uh, it didn't evolve so much uh, when it comes to technology, so you don't expect to have a uh, great uh, internet connection there. <clears throat> and roaming, it's going to be quite expensive to use. Um, there aren't that many good travel guides, but just by chance you were reading a magazine on your flight, during your flight, and you just came across a good article that was talking about uh, Really nice application that is new, was developed, but, uh, and that is the travel guide that you just need on that country to go to the places that you want to see. So, this application has a funny name. It's called Bokredos, and it's the ultimate guide to Guinea Bissau, the ultimate travel guide to Guinea Bissau. The name isn't so easy to memorize. And it was created by, yes sir? <laughs> uh, 
So, and no, you just landed there, and in the rush, you forgot the magazine, or to take a picture of the magazine, you don't have any reference. You are at the airport, there's no Wi-Fi connection, obviously. Um, the rooming is quite expensive, as I just said, but that's the only resource you can rely on. <coughs> and you need to decide where and how to reach the next place. So, what do you do? You pick your mobile phone, you open Google App Store, and play as a store, or App Store from, from, uh, from iOS, and you want to find this application. Do you guys remember these names? Either of the creator or the application? Mm -hmm. Do you know really how to spell it from beginning to end? So, this is a tricky part to me. I'll come back to this subject later. But. So, now, progressive web apps. What they, uh, what they are, what's good about them, and how they work. Um, has any of you heard about progressive web apps here? Wow, almost there. Half of you, that's good. It's scary. <laughs> um, has any of you tried to create any so far, or did some experiments with it? This is another question. <laughs> what? This is another question, aren't you? Great. So I'm oh, happy to do it. Makes my life easier. Uh, so, PWAs, PWA is basically uh, progressive web apps. It's, the, it's a term used to denote uh, the, 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 the new software development methodology. It's all about it. It's not. It's, uh, at the end, it's mostly a set of technologies that you put together. Uh, it's not like um, you are using a different um, programming language or a specific API to do it. Um, so, unlike traditional applications, progressive web apps are a hybrid of regular web pages or websites uh, and uh, mobile application. Um, this is one of the definitions. Another that I came across that is very short, it doesn't tell that much, but it's not so bad. Um, it says that they are websites that progressively become apps. This one is a bit better. Um, progressive web app uses modern web capabilities to deliver an app-like user experience. Um, I'll just show a few more to give you uh, more hints about how it, how it works like this. Uh, progressive Web App is a web app that uses modern web capabilities to deliver an app-like experience to users. These apps meet certain requirements, are deployed to servers, accessible through URLs, and indexed by search engines. So here you are already starting to understand some of the benefits of the Progressive Web Apps, uh, comparing them against uh, native apps. Um, being progressive, a progressive web app works in all the browsers, and I get one advantage. Uh, and the experience is enhanced whenever the user whose browser is updated with the new and improved features and APIs. So far, well, here you don't see a great advantage in comparison with uh, <coughs> native apps. Native apps also you can update them. Uh, I'll just jump, stay, skip for a bit to the next slide. Um, what are the goods of the progressive web apps then? Well, they are platform agnostic. <coughs> you build once, it runs everywhere, anywhere. Uh, and here, it's, this is really the major advantage as compar uh, uh, comparing to the native apps. Because if you have a native app, you have to build it for iOS, you have to build it for Android. Windows Phone, fortunately, is not a question anymore. It's one less uh, headache. Um, eventually, you'll have to build the, the desktop application for Windows, desktop application for Mac, and, of course, you need to have a website, well, uh, one single page application. So, all this together, it's a lot of code to maintain, and it's expensive. Only big companies normally 
can uh, afford to do this, to have separate teams with developers, QAs, project managers, and all of that, just to do this, uh, all these applicable variables of uh, the applications. Another advantage is that it, it's discoverable. You can find them on Google search. And here, going back to what I asked you at, at the beginning, to imagine this situation that you were in the airport and you couldn't remember the name of the application. Maybe you could remember a bit of the of my name, <laughs> my long name. Well, maybe you could go to Google search. Where you are way lot more likely to find my application from Google search if you would search Patrick application uh, Guinea Bissau. Well, with these keywords, you are likely to find the application on Google. The same is true if you would have uh, just a landing page that would then have links to the native applications that you could install on your phone. That's true. But the great of this is that here you just open this web page, and this web page is the application already. And as I said before, you are rooming. Uh, the rooming is very expensive, so you are being charged for all the megabytes of downloads. So if it would be just a landing page that would point to the App Store, the App Store you would have to click eventually on one or two links and then download the full application. You would use way more data just to get this simple application on your phone. Um, another advantage is that they are linkable, but you can just share the link with any of your friends. Imagine you are uh, navigating on a progressive web app of uh, reality state and you just found a great flat you want to show it to your girlfriend you just check the URL and you send her the URL and she can open directly whatever big desktop mobile phone whatever it doesn't matter she just opens the link and she sees straight away what you what you what you want to share she doesn't have to install the application at her hands and then on the application for sure, she will not get straight away to the page. She will have to search, she will have to tell her what to search for. All these steps. So you can avoid all, all that. Uh, they are much easier for the uh, two sides, and this on both sides, for the developers and for the users also. So okay, as for the users, they don't see these annoying uh, notifications all the time asking do you want to update this application? There's a new version of this application. Do you want me to update? Do you want me to update? And uh, for the developers, they don't, have, they don't need to go through the asshole of updating, as some of you should know how it is. If you want to update an application on the App Store, uh, it's a pain in the ass many times. And it's a long process. Uh, and you have these guys that are like uh, the securities from the airport that are very inefficient, but they are the ones that tell you that yes, okay, you can play the this bit of your application or not. So you don't have to go through all that. Um, and then, as I mentioned it before, the development costs are way lower. <coughs> Just have instead of having these four or five teams developing for all of the different uh, platforms. And also, the, low, the, the, the costs of uh, user acquisition are well over. And this is something that I'll show you later on uh, what exactly it is. And about, as a bonus, the retention rates are much higher, apparently, according to various recent, recent studies. Uh, the conver conversions also are higher. Uh, and the download size, it's smaller and unless you're doing something very wrong. Uh, uh, progressive web app, uh, the code base is much smaller than the code of an application on any of these other platforms. Does, does it have to necessarily be work, like work offline, a progressive web app, or not? Well, according to Google standards, yes. You won't be offering even to because now there is this thing that when you open the, the page for the second time, 
and if it's on a period of more than five minutes in between, uh, you get all the notes with the option to add to the home screen. You always have the option if you go to the menu, but it offers you, it shows you a banner to do it directly. Uh, so it will only happen if it has the service workers to show content offline, otherwise it will not. Because it will not consider it your application as a progressive robot. Mm -hmm. It's just that if you're in a, in a country with no internet, right. downloading an app which has all the information and I do it once, and after that I can go anywhere without an internet. Oh, you can do the same with the progressive robot. Oh, okay. Yeah. What this is one of the great things of the progressive web mm -hmm. sure. <coughs> What about speed though? Speed? Yeah. Speed compared to the really speed of performance. Of performance yeah. uh, the, the, the performance of rendering, uh, the, the application, if you have animations and that kind of stuff. Is yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, there are, I mean, you, wanna, you don't want to do a video with 3D. You know, I don't have it. I don't want to do a complex game with 3D and that sort of things with HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. It's not quite there yet. You can do some funny stuff. Well, there are some examples of uh, apps that are already interesting. But yeah, you cannot compare it with native uh, performance of that. But if you see the most of the use cases of native apps, they don't require any of this. It's really basic interfaces that will have even animations most of the time. And when they have, it's something pretty simple that you can do the same with CSS3. <coughs> so, now going back to the native apps, <coughs> this is something that is, is causing some polemic. Uh, some of you maybe already saw this. <coughs> so, one study, it, one study uh, might recently concluded that in each of the steps when you go through, uh, you lose uh, 20%, uh, well, roughly 20% of your users. So, um, assuming that you already got to the store and you are looking for a specific application, you know what you are looking for. It's an easier scenario than the, the first one that I talked about. So you go to the store, and uh, like, let's say that, well, okay, sorry. Uh, you, you go to the, the application, and the application will give you a link to the store to open the, to, to download and install the native app. Uh, in this scenario that they are exemplifying here, uh, they are assuming that it's 1,000 uh, 1, users that got to this stage. So from these 1,000, just 800 get, get to the next stage of clicking on this uh, link to get to the store. Um, then they lose 20% more when people are searching for on the store, for it on the store, then other 20% when they click install, and then other 20% until they accept the permissions <coughs> after installing the application, uh, as uh, the latest versions of the iOS, is, the iOS and uh, Android they require you to. Um, then again, 20% when you are actually downloading the application and, until you use it. You already missed, in this case, uh, you have only a, a, lot, a, a bit more than a quarter of the users uh, using the application, so you, you missed all the rest on the previous steps. Um, it's just quite compelling, the, the, this uh, study, because it's, it's, it's quite the same as the, what, what we already know for a long time about um, online shops, for instance, that we assume that the users m must be able to complete the, 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 the purchase in three clicks or three pages. Otherwise, you're going to miss this. In this in this case, it's something more or less like the same. The users, they get more and they have to do more clicks, more actions, and you're losing them in each of the steps. Uh, Another issue with the native apps, it's, it's called the app fatigue that, that some of you or also some of you already have heard about. Um, so, in 2008, back in 2008, when the first iPhone was released, it was spectacular, this thing of 
having the possibility to install applications. Uh, and then everyone went and rushed to get the gold. So you got, you know, at the moment you have millions of applications. You don't even know where to start from when you want to find some application. Um, so there, there was a, a survey uh, conducted by this home score uh, company uh, that found that among the users, uh, most spent just 85% of their time using the top five applications. Which means that it just, you, you just can't. So in, in this top application, this in the US, these are the top 15 applications that installed. It. Um, so this leaves us developers of any other application with 15% left. And out of this 15%, big part of their time they are spending uh, on the web browser, I guess. So maybe, I don't know, 1% <laughs> is your chance of them to install and use your application. In fact. Um, so, and then, no, yes. If PWAs are so great, why are so easy? That's the question some of you probably have in your minds, right? Um, well, so I'm going to show you a few examples. These are case studies, but actually, these applications are online live now. Uh, Alibaba, AliExpress, this, is one, this one is the showcase every time that people are speaking about this uh, They saw an increase in the conversions of 76%, which is it's a, it's a great number. Uh, the mo monthly active users grow 14% in iOS and 30% in Android. What we are comparing here? So we are, we are comparing the they, they have they have the native app and they created a progressive web app with similar features. But it was recreated app, like to look exactly the same, right? So it was it was new app. Right? <coughs> I think it looks actually the same. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm just trying to understand. Right, right, right. If right. Aspects of PWA uh, boost. If I remember correctly, I saw once I saw like both applications. I think they look similar. Okay. They are both the same, right? I think I did one. Okay. Exactly the same. Because you know, this first line is going to be the selling point here. <laughs> so, so. Uh, to note one thing in iOS, the web workers don't, uh, iOS doesn't support a few of the major things of the progressive apps. It doesn't allow you yet to use uh, the service workers, and this is on the core of the progressive web apps. So, uh, the, the ser with service workers, you are able to cache content to show them offline, and also <coughs> they don't support the, they, don't, they have the ability, but it's not the same to add to the home screen. So, all the, what you can get is you can get an icon on the home screen, but not every user understands how to do it. Most of the users don't do it because it's really not obvious. But still, they saw these increases. And you are now thinking about why. Later on, I'll come back to the subject. Uh, another case study, housing.com. This is the easiest, most, easiest, most trusted real estate portal. Uh, so for the nat native app, they were acquiring users for this price, three dollars and seventy-five cents uh, per each user on, it, on their Android app. <coughs> After moving to progressive web apps, they saw the user acquisition cost dropping to seven cents. It's a huge drop on, their, on the price of uh, on the cost of acquiring users. Uh, if you are talking about thousands of users, that's a major, major uh, change. Uh, this also the page load time decrease, decreasing at thirteen percent. Thirty percent. The conversions increases thirty eight percent compared to the native app. Uh, another case study. Uh, is, well, you should know it. It's a service just like you were, uh, not so famous in the Czech Republic, I think. But. So after creating the right web app. 
they had five times more rights than expected coming from the website. Um, and then they decided to invest more in progressive web apps and intend to achieve feature parity uh, between platforms in the near future. Uh, so, and then here you have numbers about downward size, sizes. So for Android, the app was 17 megabytes. I was 75. <laughs> yeah. uh, the progressive web app, well, naturally, less than one megabyte. Um, and it can even get better. It depends on the way how you structure it. If you use techniques like lazy loading and that kind of sort of things, it can drop radically. So it's like way it's incomparably better. Um, Make my trip. Uh, it's another Indian online travel company. By the way, I'm show, uh, showing these two uh, case studies, and in this this case studies, it, it, for them, uh, this benefits on the page download size. It's really, really super important. If here in the Czech Republic, in the West world, it's important. In India, it's way more, because we are talking about a country where the penetration of 3G is small. It's slow internet and 4G eventually it will come more better. So you're talking about users that they can buy a fifth of the, their salary to access the internet and to have uh, they have uh, 500 megabytes per month. So it really makes them a, a huge difference. Um, so in this case study, after um, the researchers they concluded that most of the users and install applications after six months. And this is not just on their case, it's for everyone, it's normal. Uh, most of their users book same, some uh, same day trips. And PWIs users booked three times more than native app users. Uh, so this again connects to the other slide where I, I showed that uh, in each step you lose 20 uh, roughly 20% of the users. Uh, so, and actually, just a few days ago, I, I had, we had this experience. We were traveling and we lost flight. We had to book a, a flight. Uh, we had to book the next flight to go in the Philippines. The internet was terribly slow. The website was not good, but even if it were, it would be. Uh, I needed to access the website quickly and to buy, to book a trip, that's it. If I had to install an application, go through all the steps, 75 megabytes of that application, well, until I reach the point that I'm really booking the trip, forget, I bought already the, the, the tickets for another flight company. Um, and with this sort of applications, you just go to the website and it's there, you can buy it straight, buy it straight away, it's very quick and you do it. Uh, so there are many other successful cases, I'm just talking about a few here. Uh, the Washington Post, they, they went through this way and they uh, are inspiring a lot of people. Uh, their traffic grew significantly since they started using uh, progressive web apps. Flip, Flipkart also, uh, Twitter has a mobile version, well, they, have a, they always have a mobile version. But if you access it through this uh, URL, you'll see the progressive web app and you can actually compare with the normal one. And you can see that it, it loads, loads faster and you can see content on the um, So it's much better. Uh, they, they almost for sure will switch the other version to this one uh, very soon. Flipboard also, you should try it. And this one, it, it, it's good if you want to size. It doesn't have too complex graphics, but it's very responsive. It's, it's really neat. It's nice. I was using it for a while. It's almost the same as the, net, the, the native app. The scroll of the application with some effects, nice effects with CSS. It's really nice. Um, Weather.com, also, it's not an application that is using uh, uh, some of the things from progressive web apps. 
it's also interesting to see. Um, so these are kind of the core requirements to have something that you can call a progressive web app and that Google will tell that you have a progressive web app. So the, your website should be started over HTTPS for security reasons. Um, the pages <coughs> should be responsive on tablets, mobile devices, well, responsive. Uh, this is quite normal nowadays, almost every website has. If they don't have, they should, they must. Uh, you should have a, a start URL at, at least uh, that, that loads offline using making use of the service workers. Um, and then you should uh, provide the metadata to add uh, to home screen, uh, which is not much. Uh, the first mode, fast even on 3G, um, should be. The site should work across browsers. The page transitions should feel like uh, they, are, they, they are blocking on the network. Each page has an URL. So pretty, it's pretty much the same things that you needed to have to have a decent uh, web application already. Um, apart from a few points that, well, it's necessarily to be over HTTPS, but also that you should have if you are creating it, especially if you have a shop online, you must have it. Um, so if you have uh, these things, two of them consider your application as a progressive product. Then on the second, after the second visit, it will also be visible to edit to the uh, So what's the core of a good progressive web app? Uh, you should have this manifest JSON. This is basically a, a, it's a simple JSON file where you specify the metadata of the app, the start URL, uh, the icons, uh, so you should specify the, the various sizes of the icons that will show on the home screen, or if you open it on Google Chrome, also has a different size and so on, so it's like six different sizes of icons. Um, you should specify the background color, and this is uh, so Google Chrome in this case, and in the future others will, they will support. As you open the web page, they show, even before having the markup loaded, they will show some background, uh, background color. Uh, you should specify a short name. This is for the, when you are adding to the home. It's uh, what's written there. Um, well, it's some other information needed for the application to show on the home screen. And then, other, this is a concept. This is not really a must. You, but it's very advisable to do, to create an app shell. What is an app shell? App shell is a uh, manual HTML, uh, CSS and JavaScript required to power the user interface and when cached offline can ensure instance, each instant reliable good performance uses on repeated visits. So, and here you can see an example of what is a, an app shell. It's the same that people are doing in the native apps, so you create a skeleton of the application, let's say, where you have the navigation bar, you have the basic elements of the page. Um, and then later on, you, you, you load the contents inside the app shop. Um, so, how, uh, what are the service workers? So, service workers are a sort of a proxy that handles networks, network requests to power offline functionality, push notifications, background content updating, content caching, providing alternative... Uh, they can provide also alternative content for, for long and wide, and more. Well, I will go back to a few of these points. So, the service workers are very powerful, a very powerful thing um, that web was lacking really for all these years. Um, it's like a middleman. You make a request, the page makes a request to whatever URL, and this service worker can respond as you tell him to respond. 
So, for instance, you can cache uh, images or even load them in advance before the user needs them. Um, and they stay at cache that you can cache them to stay online or offline. Well, the web browser is where you can do this, but there are some scenarios where you have advantage in using the service worker. It can also uh, cache content to keep it offline. Uh, so, taking the example of uh, Washington Post, for example, uh, they can cache the content of the web page, of the home page, the, the headlines, the, the list of articles. So, when you go offline, let's say you are on the metro, in between stations, you are reading the Washington, and you are opening the Washington Post. Is it cached away this content? You can see the content, and you can navigate to it. It's cached on your browser. And uh, also, it can provide your connected content for low and wide. Uh, currently, I think only Chrome has that. It has an option where you can say, I want, I want you to deliver me content for low and wide. But then it's up to the website, Progressive uh, Web in this case, to define what content they will deliver for this type of users. So, you get all the requests uh, this flag uh, on the headers of the re this request, and then you handle it with the service web, uh, the, the, the service worker. You can have a condition on the service worker to check, okay, this guy wants low and wide uh, content, so you can deliver images that are super low resolution, for example. He can still see the content and can still see an image. Then, last, going to some of the specifics of the service workers, they can't, interact, uh, can't, they can't directly interact with the DOM, but that's normal, yeah, you can do that with the GS. Uh, they have separate life cycles from your web page, so it doesn't block it, they are running in the background. Uh, it's cool, you can do whatever with your web page, it doesn't stop it. Uh, they only run uh, over HTTPS for security reasons, but, so you must have your website over HTTPS. And it's fully async. Um, and there's, oh, it's, it says its advantages and drawbacks. Uh, you cannot use, uh, you, you, you cannot uh, cache the contents directly here, you can use the, the browser cache. Uh, with the service workers, you can use on the other on, on your web page and use this web page to ask the to request the service worker the data. Uh, the service workers are currently supported by Firefox, Chrome, in both uh, well in, in all the platforms, uh, Opera, uh, Android browser uh, partially, uh, Edge. Is in development, which is good news. And so far, it's still under consideration. Which <coughs> um, but you want to buy somewhere? Yes, it's still under consideration. <laughs> um, it's just making sure that progressive web apps will interoperate between browsers and can be placed on a, a, a Windows Store. This is also great news. So, which means in the near future, you'll be able to build a progressive web app and have it in Windows App Store and install it and run it as if it's a native app. So, it even shows on the start menu, whatever. Yeah. Um, it's the so, only way they'll get apps in Windows Store. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I've been uh, really hoping. That Microsoft will be smart enough. So, for the new phone, OS, whatever they will release, uh, they will opt to support for the progressive web apps. It's the only way they can close the gap. Uh, the gap, 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 gap. Otherwise, they're going to die again. Um, and it would be a great thing for us developers also. So, what about iOS? iOS still likes support for service workers, push notifications. 
and the installation to the home screen, well, they have something sort of that, but it's not so neat, so simple to all. You can get an icon on the home page, home screen, um, that but you will open. If you use um, Google or Chrome for um, iOS, it should work. Uh, it doesn't support still. It doesn't do Google oh, for iOS. Unfortunately. This is what's actually direct with the operation system. Well, it's up to the operation system. Part of all of our workers. I'm sorry? What work has it No, also not, not at all. Unfortunately not. <laughs> Uh, oh, and once again, you know, I'm also hoping that the market will, yeah, absolutely. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll push them to yeah. support it in the, in the near future. It's under consideration. Well, it's said that I think it's on their plan to develop, but they're the plan for the next five years. Five years is too long. Why? Because it's where you can bypass the App Store. Yeah, yeah, but the market, the market always dictates uh, what they have to yeah. do at the end, so absolutely yeah. in the end they will go on that. So you should want more? No. <laughs> yes, <laughs> if they start using, use, uh, losing users because it's that's trying to show They have no other, option, uh, other way than to implement uh, So when I said, as I said before, uh, is it, but still, progressive web apps are still worth it, even for iOS, uh, because we take all the other goods out of it, apart from this, which are the major ones, but there are other things that you can still take out of it. And as it was proven by this case uh, that I showed, um, they got some benefits even in iOS using progressive web apps, comparing to non progressive web apps. Um, well, and what about desktop? Well, you get all the benefits, just that you cannot add the apps to the desktop yet. But I do believe that Windows in the, in the near future you will be able to. Uh, Mac OS, once more, there's nothing mentioned about it yet. Uh, well, and yeah, Microsoft seems to be really taking this seriously, they want to make the progressive web apps as first class citizens and allow them to be present on the Windows Store in the near future. Can I ask, how do you interact? How, what's the experience of, a, of this kind of app? Do you, like, do you go to Google and search for Google and then you just like click a link and then you're off in Safari, I'm not sorry, in the uh, yeah, so Android browser? So unless you see this onto the app, or you keep you an icon on the home screen and open it, and it opens a shell of your a browser or something. Right. Yeah. It's okay. So it's it opens your browser, but without any without interface. Like, so yeah. Uh -huh, okay. So it, it really looks like an application for any info. And uh, if you are searching <laughs> between applications, it's not a browser window. It's really like a, an individual application that you can close at any time that you wish. Mm -hmm. Then if you want to rely on existing interface like uh, the back button, forward button, refresh, etc., you need to implement a uh, fallback inside of this application, right? For this. I'm sorry, but if you want to rely on interface elements of the browser itself, like back button, forward button, uh, then okay. you Yeah. 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 But, but I mean, why would you want uh... well, I agree. So actually, one one of the expectations on the progressive web app is that it really has an interface as a native app. You know, on the native app, you don't have this back of this. Mm -hmm. So something that it's expected to have, for example, is that to have a logo on the top left corner of the screen, that if you click to wait on it, it will take you back to the initial page of the application, and this sort of things. Except on Android, you have the <coughs> universal back button, right? Yeah, but, but that's going to work on the same way because it's not a browser and on the browser the back button also behaves on the same way. So you have the browser history API that is working there. So it will behave as if it's a web page, you just don't see these buttons on the browser. Mm -hmm. So in this scenario it will work exactly on the same way. Yeah, you know, I was mentioning uh, my startup is building a progressive mm -hmm. app. So 
in a way where <clears throat> I'm not technical, sorry, guys, but, <laughs> uh, but what they were doing was develop. You know how you develop a website to be responsive to mobile. What you're doing is you're, you're de designing it mobile first to be responsive to desktop. Right, and that is a big brand. Yeah, that's the, the, the right way to do it now. Uh, and with the progressive web apps, there is another thing. It's that uh, you should make it to work first offline and then online. Mm -hmm. So with the service workers, the way it works is that um, you are supposed to create the apps uh, um, on, on, on the server. So the first request to the page should be a static page with the content. And then afterwards, uh, you, you, you are doing all the, the mistakes of your JavaScript. And uh, the, so the service worker, it shows you first your offline content if it has cached already. And then on the background, it's checking if there is content uh, uh, updated. In case it has, then after it, it updates the content and shows you the newer content. Uh, by default, I, I think it's saving 24 hours that it, it tries to get a new version of the content, but you, you have some techniques that you can use to force them to do it in a shorter period. So I hope I'm not giving all this. Um, so what, what can you do as of now with progressive web apps? This, once again, this, these are all technologies that you can use I mean, it doesn't have, you don't have to call it progressive web app, but they are already available as of now, and you can already use them in Chrome and lists. You can use all of this already. So you can take advantage of uh, APIs that give access to some notifications. Uh, this is good to create engagement. Um, cache the content to display offline, so the service works. You can stream video and voice with WebRTC. You have to look at this slide, he's doing that. Uh, Skype, I don't know what it all is. Uh, you have other big players already using WebRTC heavily, although it's not in the prime time yet, but it's usable. Google Hangouts is a good mix of WebRTC. So this you can make use of, and without having to install any plugin, you just Yes. Uh, you can access Bluetooth devices. Uh, so, oh, so you have to allow uh, the browser to use it, right? On these things. I think so. I think so. It's the same on uh, the native apps. You also have to allow. So. Uh, to access the camera and microphone, well, to vibrate the phone, you can get the battery status. Uh, you can get this media if you are requiring for, uh, let's say, a profile picture or something like this. Uh, you can get the geolocation, which is which can be quite handy. But yeah, again, here it has to for permissions to, to, to access it. Um, you can get into full screen mode naturally, and uh, and now this is a new one. That it, it's an advantage compared to uh, native apps. It can seamlessly sign in using a Google account on Android. Uh, this is something that you cannot do yet, I think, on, on native apps. And uh, with progressive web apps, you can. You have your Google account, everyone that has an Android must have a Google account, so they can automatically sign in on any application without having to request the user to, do, to fill in the form. Um, well, this slide is not so right to the title of this. Um, yeah, so, so this is just a graph to show uh, the progressive web, web apps. So, in the uh, here you have the, the, the steps, um, the important steps to, to, to have the users uh, in your web app. So as of uh, uh, having the accelerated mobile pages, uh, it drives you to have more engagement and, and the acquisition. Um, the push, push notifications as you have also with the native apps 
they also help you to to drive up the engagement, the conversions, and the retentions. Uh, and then the seamless signing, which is something that just progressive web apps have, they also drive you to better conversions and retention on the your application. So this it's all. Uh, I'm very confident that this is a, a thing to build. I will. I am betting on it. Uh, I have uh, one application that I'm developing with friends, and I do intend to just do the progressive web app because it's just two of us. Uh, I'm the only one doing the interface, and then the other guy is just doing the backend. So anyway, we can afford to do the application on the platforms. So this seems really to be the way to go, but even if we had the resources, I would go still this way at the beginning, test the waters, and only if something I would go on the other way. Because right now you can really have uh, just the progressive web app and eventually have for <coughs> iOS well, a, a hybrid application that still behaves as native application, so you don't have to... Or you can also use the same code bias for it. Um, so for me, this is really the way to go. So, Patrick, I have a question here. Because you didn't touch this topic. What about monetization of these apps? Because I think this is this is the biggest problem, problem here, right? Because people are getting money from, from apps. So there, there are apps uh, in the App Store, for example, we, well, biggest business model is that you are buying, you are buying this app and you are buying money. Here you get this, this, this out of stock. You can pay for the content, for example, or buy a uh, referral, but there is no direct stream of money like it's in App Store Fire Engine. Right. It's a question, it's a topic that I need to investigate. Uh, I need to my own work and I need to it. So I think can, uh, it can be a big showstopper for, for this. I think this is what can be actually pushing back developers from, from this technology. Because there is no direct stream of money for them, right? I, I would say that many applications uh, are free to download and they agree <coughs> on some micro payments later. And <coughs> this is the concept you can. Uh, All those examples you mentioned that like about Washington uh, Post, some travel agencies, right, some other uh, applications. Yeah. You're paying for content and for, for something different. But when you are paying for app itself, this is not, not the case, I think. And however, this is the short. Like I don't want to give you a wrong answer, I can <laughs> make up something about it. Hey, the subscriptions, you can always have your own subscription of course, model. Of course, but you know, you can sell it. You know how you need to pay in, in app, for example, for some extra likes on your favorite game or something. So it's very I easy. Think, I, 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 I read something about it, but very quickly. I, I, I think that uh, in Google, uh, Android, you're going to have something like that, even mm -hmm. for this progressive web apps. But I want to run to anything. And I think what, what you presented, that uh, you can see this, uh, you, you can log in directly from Google account. Right. I think this is perfect step in proper direction. Yeah. But we know this, I think it's, it's kind of a peaceful group of developers who can be shot. I think. But from most of point of view, for example, I would I think we should go straight. So for example, we yeah. where we do it. Okay. <coughs> Thank you very much for this. Do you have any more questions? No? If not, uh, please eat more sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> So it away and a uh, few more things. Uh, if you have any comments or ideas for the next meetings, please uh, just comment it on our meetup page just uh, to make sure that uh, we know some feedback from you. And uh, the next meeting is probably going to be next month. I don't remember the date. Uh, I'll try to uh, put it to uh, the web soon. And uh, the presentations, if I can ask you for that, uh, we can also uh, display them on the page so you can find them. And that's it for today. I think that uh, they have draft beer uh, over there in, on, on the bar.
So whoever wants to join us for one, yeah. you can stay there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much for coming and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we did a few meetups uh, 